Oh yeah, I like you, Tyre. That was so awkward. Hello, internet people. Today's video is gonna have all kinds of stuff going on in it. I don't know what I titled it or what the thumbnail is gonna show, but that might give you an idea of something that's happening in it. And today is also a sad day because it is the last day with the NSX. It was so fun filming the review of this thing. I'm really gonna miss it. You'll have to wait for this though. Jeff. Clicky, clicky. Jeff, baby Jeff. Hello, baby Jeff. I gotta cut the roof off this car. There's a link up above to the last video where that project started. As you'll notice, the windshield's gone. I paid and had that removed, 20 bucks. I should have did that from the start. Yeah. Who? Oh, good, roll cage. If you guys wanna see me finish this Focus Rally project, sometime in 2021, I'm gonna to have to have more people helping out because it's a lot of fabrication hours. So Fred is gonna help me today getting this roof panel off so I can get this thing ready on the inside for paint. So Fred's going to weld two little tabs from the roll cage to the B pillars, just so when we pull the roof off, it doesn't flex the car. You can see it's like super, super close anyway, so it's not like it's really gonna have to be that big of a weld. That's a tuna. I'm not sure if he's a yellowtail, or what type he is, but he's a tuna. That was Fred's first dog. He's cute. You look like a 70s rocker from this angle. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you play for a band that did crystal meth. There, there's a little termite mound on top of the roll bite bar, <laughs> roll bar, that will hold it just so we can cut the roof off. I got it. Wait, <laughs> you got it? It's hard to hold camera and do that at the same time. No more roof. It's off. Finally. That's a giant sunroof. All right, trying to get so much accomplished in one day, it's crazy. I just dropped off the tires and the wheels for Celine's Xterra at Harrison to get them mounted and balanced. The T-Rex came in handy today. I was actually able to use it for what it's intended for other than jumping stuff. I like the color combo on this STI. Silver with white wheels. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's a Cayman GT4. I haven't seen one of those in person yet. Look at the size of those front brake calipers. Jeez. Uh, we're gonna head back to the shop while they mount and balance these tires so I can get some more work done. Okay, back to work on the Focus. I got quite a few more things in here that I need to gut out before I can get this thing prepped and ready to paint the inside of it. And before I put the new roof on, I need to paint the inside of the car because there's no way to get the tops of the roll bars or the front of the roll bars by the windshield if the windshield and the roof are on here. That's why I removed all this stuff. Well, I removed the roof because it had a sunroof hole and I got a roof from a junkyard that doesn't have one. I wonder if this speaker at one point in time was like premium audio. Cause I mean the SVT Focus was a special model. So maybe this was a premium speaker. Pretty big magnet in the back of this thing. 25 watts. This area right here is gonna be really difficult to try to patch in panels to cover all this stuff because it's not a perfectly flat surface. You can see from up here looking down onto it that it actually has a concave in like some little dips and valleys and stuff. So I don't know how I'm gonna fill these in and make it look clean. Like that's the whole reason why I swapped roof skins with a slick top car. I don't wanna just patch in a piece of metal because in my opinion that just looks sloppy. So I'm trying to do this the correct way if there is such a thing, I guess. Which is ironic to say because I literally welded each one of these little tiny holes from the spot welds for the rear seat belts. I mean, I'm gonna grind it down with a flapper disc so it'll be nice and smooth, but still, I don't even know if that's the right, correct way to do this. Oh, it's dust. There's probably all kinds of disgusting in that dust. 
That's cute. There's even a little tweeter inside this speaker right here. I think this thing probably did have a fairly okay sound system for 2002 standards. Heel. Of course, now all cars have to have like 600 plus watt sound systems or else people won't be happy. That's why new cars cost so much. That's interesting. It's like a little sealed unit. I spent all that time routing my battery cables all the way through here with little brackets and I'm peeling it all off again. I need to take off this panel right here. I have a problem with going too deep. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> with this cutter bit and I ended up busting a hole all the way through. I hope that's not what he said. A couple of you in the last video recommended trying to use one of those finger sanders instead of these spot weld drill bits to remove spot welds. And I looked up a video on it and you're right, that actually looks kind of brilliant. So I think I'm gonna buy one to, to try that with. It's kind of smart because this is a pain in the ass. I can't tell if that's a spot weld right there. I mean, it looks like a spot weld. Ouch, that was my knuckle. This thing's awesome though. I like this little slingshot and gauge mechanism. Well, that's a good way to get a splinter in your finger. Aha! And just like that, I made one up here. I went and bought a, uh, a finger sander. I really want to try this out. You guys hyped it, so we'll see if it works. Here it goes. Yeah, I mean, that looks like it works. It's a little wonky, the the belt keeps moving around on me, but that's probably just because I don't know what I'm doing with adjusting it. All right, a couple takeaways from using the sander versus a spot weld drill bit. This, I feel, is easier with less skill required, but takes longer. This, a lot faster, but you have to have a little bit of skill and common sense because you quickly start forgetting where the spot weld even was and then you just start making a huge mess. And it's kind of also hard to gauge how deep you're going as well. Almost. The wheels and tires are ready for the Xterra. I told you I was doing a lot in this video. This video is gonna be weird because like, I know most of it I was working on the focus, but honestly, how am I supposed to make a whole entire video about putting the new wheels and tires on the Xterra? It takes like two seconds to do that. That'd be a really boring video. So maybe this is a way to tie in the people watching the Xterra content to the focus because that's an off-road vehicle as well. Okay. Oh, don't hit. Hello, Gump. Haven't driven you in a while. This is close. I like to live dangerously. I'll let this thing sit and idle so the battery can charge. Say goodbye, shitty wheels and tires. Where's the rolly chair? I have a method to my madness when it comes to taking off wheels. Oh yeah, I like you, tire. That was so awkward and so weird. Before I show you guys these tires, I wanna say I did not get a tire sponsorship because I wanted to choose what I thought was the best possible brand and model of tire for off-roading in this truck's capability level here in Arizona. And so I bought these for my sister and they are a 235, 85, 16, and they are, to do. Super heavy. Oh my god, this is heavy. Holy. This is a heavy boy. Yeah. These guys right here. I got the white lettering facing inward because it's mil spec look. You're not going to have white lettering facing out on a mil spec look. I'm not sure whether or not I ended up using a wheel spacer on this. This is zero wheel spacer right now, which should keep the scrub radius the same as OE. But because it's a tall, skinny wheel, it might 
It might look a little weird, but I, I want to test it out first and see and then decide whether or not to do a wheel spacer as much as I hate wheel spacers, but. It looks so mean. I'm gonna get the rear ones on, then I'll go get my sister, because she hasn't seen it yet. I think this is gonna lift the truck a little bit too, because putting these two tires next to each other, it was like an inch and a half difference in height, which is weird because this size, I think, is a 31.7. So maybe the 31.10.5 wasn't a true 31 inches. I know someone's going to ask about the spare tire. No, we did not order a tire and a wheel for that just because I don't think that size tire will fit under here. So what that means is we're going to have to get a spare tire carrier back bumper with like the fold out spare tire carrier. So that way she has uh, the correct size spare, which means it will need a matching front bumper because Slight dilemma. I did read that this was a possibility with the size tire, and yep, it is definitely possible. I have to trim the bottom of the mud guard just a little bit because it's rubbing on the tire at full lock. What's even weirder about it though is it only does it on the driver's side. I, I don't understand why. I guess the passenger side one is worn more than the driver's side one. So I'll just trim it a little bit. Oh, these scissors suck. I thought these scissors would work. These are terrible. There. I think that'll work good. I just gotta clean it up so it doesn't look so ratty. Okay. <laughs> nice. You like it? Yo, that looks so sick. I don't know if we should put a wheel spacer on it or not. I don't think it needs one, but like to get the wheels outward a little bit, I think it looks oh, fine. Sure. Are you checking it out too? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Don't run away, okay? My OCD struck again. If you notice, the truck's back up on the lift. This is the adjuster bolt for the torsion bars. I noticed it was sitting just a tad bit lower in the front than when I first did the adjustments on the torsion bars with the new upper control arms. So I figured I'd just go and see if they were set correctly after we did the rear main seal and the oil pan gasket. And I noticed that the gap right here at the bump stop to the upper control arm was more than I had originally set it. So I decided to adjust it a little bit and it looks like this bolt has been adjusted one too many times. The bolt stretched and when I was taking the nut off, it stripped the entire thing. So I gotta replace these bolts and reset the torsion bar height. I did take measurements though, right before the alignment, so I'll be able to get it just to spec the seam. I think actually what most likely happened is it was either during the alignment process to get the alignment and spec in the front, they might have cranked on the torsion bars, or maybe it just settled. But either way, I gotta go find these bolts because I don't have any, so I'm gonna have to end the video right here while I go hunt around Tucson for bolts. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Say bye, Celine. <laughs>